Hi, this is Jody from mcpactions.com. Today I'm going to be showing you a quick blueprint on this photo of my daughter Jenna. This photo, I'm going to pull up my file info. I had shared on Facebook and I was getting a lot of questions about my settings and the lighting. Actually, no artificial lighting was used and no reflectors were even used. I was just using the nice diffused sun. Now, my settings were f2.8, so it was an aperture of 2.8 an ISO of 200, my focal length was 145, and my speed, my shutter speed was at 1 over 640. I was using the 70 to 200 2.8 Mark II lens, and those were my settings. We're going to go ahead now, I'm going to edit this photo for you. So this was the beginning photo. Nice, a little, not really underexposed, but her face could use some extra light and the photo could just use a little oomph, I suppose. And we're going to go ahead into the fusion set. And my favorite way to use the fusion set is to run the color fusion mix and match because it allows for more than 20 actions to run at once. And then we can kind of pick and mix and match. So I'm gonna go ahead and let that run and you'll see it just takes about 10 seconds or so if your computer's running optimally. And then I'm gonna go ahead for this picture and I'm gonna use lemonade stand to start out with. Now when you click on something like that, you might say that's perfect, I'm done. But um, play around a little sometimes and find out what works for you. For me, I tend to like something a little bit more contrasty, so I'm gonna bring the percent down for Lemonade Stand to 19%. And now I'm gonna turn on Vanilla Cream. And I'm gonna also bring this down. I'm gonna use this around 26% for this particular photo. And I'm liking what's going on with this a lot, but I wanna bring out a little bit of color, just a touch. So I'm gonna go ahead and use Magic Markers to the select from color the same pop. set. It'll pull up a message explaining that you need to go ahead and choose a soft edge brush. So you want your hardness set low, zero to maybe 15, 20%. And the size of your brush, I always change my size by using my right and left bracket keys. So I'm gonna use my right bracket key. And I am using, I should point out at the top here, the opacity I've got set at 100%. But if you don't want as much color pop, you would just change that percentage lower. Now when you have a soft edge airbrush, it feathers at the edges, which is great because that way it kind of comes in lighter at the edges, so you don't have to be quite as careful when you paint. If you do notice a halo forming, you'll make your brush smaller or a little harder. I don't have one here, but if you do notice it, that's how you would handle that. Then you'll see the default for this particular layer is at 66. If you wanted it more intense, you could go up as high as 100 or you could go as low as you want as well. I'm gonna keep it right at the default of 66%. The next thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is run Dodgeball, which is Selective Lightning. It tells you to use a soft edge brush and to change the opacity to between 20 and 35%. So I'm gonna go ahead and change the opacity up at the top toolbar here. And what we're gonna do with the Dodgeball, which lightens, is I'm gonna go ahead and add some extra light just in her eye socket area on her face. I'm going to actually zoom in a little bit so you can really see this. And also, one thing I like to do sometimes with this is actually highlight her curls a bit. So for curly hair, it's quite fun to use dodgeball and just come in and pick a few hairs to highlight there. And then I'm going to do shade, which is selective darkening. And for shade, I'm going to actually do a very soft vignette around the edges. So again, I'm using a soft edge brush. I can work my way in a bit the first time, but because it's at a low opacity, if I let go of my mouse and repaint a second time, I get slightly darker edges. So anything I want slightly darker, if I want her hat a little darker, I can even paint on that. Then the last thing I'm gonna go ahead and do with this picture is I'm gonna go ahead and flatten. When I do retouching, you can build layers if you are familiar with layer order and having things not interrupt each other. But with Fusion, there are a few pixel layers up in one-click color, which I did leave at 100%. And as a result, it's probably easier just to run the Eye Doctor on a flattened file. Otherwise, layer order could come into play. So I'm gonna run the Eye Doctor. And when I run the Eye Doctor and use it, I zoom way in on her eyes. Okay, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with Sharp as Attack. You'll see the mask is selected, very, very important. And I'm gonna put my opacity of my brush at 100%. I'm just gonna come in here and sharpen up her eyes. And I'm gonna also use the Enhanced Catch Light layer just to add a little bit of light where there already was some hitting. Very subtle. 
And you can see now that photo is looking really good. Let's go ahead and take a look at a before and after of this shot. There is my before shot. And there is my after shot. Again, this was using Fusion, Color Fusion Mix and Match, Lemonade Stand and Vanilla Cream, as well as the Eye Doctor and Dodgeball and Shade from the set. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Jody, and I'm from mcpactions.com. If you have any questions, please message me through Facebook or my website, and I'll try to help you out. Thank you so much.